At this point in time, we are comfortable with with doing questions that involve work. But I've kept I've been hinting at the whole time throughout the last lessons that if we know the work, we can then work out how the velocity of the object will change. And so a very important theorem was discovered many, many years ago called the work energy theorem. And the formula for that is the following. And this formula is given to you in the exam. And so what it tells us is that if you know the network, then you can work out the change in the kinetic energy. Now we know that kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So it's got something to do with velocity. So we've spent the last couple of lessons learning how to work out the net work. And if we can do that, then we can work out how the velocity of the object is going to change. So here's a basic example just to illustrate the process. So here we have a box of mass 5 kilograms, which is being pulled along a horizontal path, which has a frictional force of 7 newtons. The pulling force is 20 newtons. The box is initially moving, so that's at the beginning is moving at two meters per second, determine the velocity of the box after 15 meters. So there are various ways that you can do this. One of them is to go work out W net first. So let's do that because we're quite good at that by now. So we know that W net is equal to F net times by the change in the displacement times by cos theta. You know what I'm talking about there, right? In the previous lessons, we said that work is equal to that and so if you're looking at the net then you must use net here and net here you could also keep it separate if you wanted to like we did in one of our previous lessons but this one's quite easy so f net is going to be equal to 20 minus 7 the distance is going to be 15 meters and if this box has a net force which is 20 minus 7 that's positive so the box is going to move like this to the right when the net force is to the right and let's say the box is also going to be moving to the right and so we can say cos of zero and so if you go work that out you end up with 195 joules so that is w net so then we can say so now the next let me just show you in case you wanted to do it separately so if we have this box let me just do a free body diagram we've got a force applied and then we've got the force of friction so if you wanted to do those separately you can so you could do the work Due to, due to the applied force, that's going to be equal to the force due to the applied force, delta x times by cos theta. So the applied force is 20 newtons, the distance is 15, and if the object's moving to the right, the applied force would also go to the right, and so that's going to be cos of 0. And so 20 times 15 is going to give us 300 joules. You would then have to look at the work due to friction and that's going to be equal to the force of friction times by delta x times by the cos of theta. Now the force of friction is 7 newtons, the distance is 15 and if the object is moving to the right friction would always go in the opposite direction so that's going to be cos 180. And so if you type this one on the calculator, you end up with 105, well negative 105 joules. And so if you want to work out the net then net is to means total, so that would be WA plus WF. And so that's going to be 300 plus negative 105, and that's going to give you 195 joules. And that's what we got when we did the other method. So guys, you must decide what's best for you. I'm going to keep showing you two methods, well, for the, at least for the next few videos, just so you can see that there are two different ways, and then you must do whatever's best for you. So the point is, is that W net was equal to 195. So now we can use this formula and we can say 195 is equal to change. Now remember change means final minus initial. So that's EK final minus EK initial. Now remember kinetic energy is equal to a half MV squared. And so we can say that 195 is equal to a half and then the mass is five kilograms. The velocity final we don't know, so I'm just going to say v squared minus, and now in the beginning the mass was also 5, but the velocity was 2. And so this 195, because it's positive, it's going to cause the velocity to be more than what it was in the beginning. Because have a look what happens here. If we leave this on the right, we end up having 195 plus half 5 times 2 squared. So we're going to add to the 195, whereas if that 195 was negative, then the object would slow down. And so now it's just a case of solving. So if you type in the left hand side on your calculator, you end up with 205 and then half of 5 is just 2.5 V squared. You can then divide by 2.5 
and then take the square root. And so that's going to give us an answer of 9.05, 9.05 meters per second. So this object was initially moving at 2 meters per second. Then energy was added to the object. Yes, there was friction, but luckily the pulling force was enough to overcome that. And so the pulling force causes the object's velocity to become 9.05. And so that's all for this lesson, guys. In the next couple of lessons, we're going to practice this quite a lot. So thank you for watching.